Hello Captains, I am your host Brent Justice and welcome to my gaming channel Just Gaming For Us. This video is related to Star Trek Online the game news. This is a news update video. First of all, I apologize for not providing a news update video recently in the game. There really hasn't been a lot of news in Star Trek Online to report on. There has not been any real new content or new things to do that has been, well, very exciting this summer. Uh, so there hasn't really been a lot of news, but there's news now because the Klingon little, I guess, expansion that they're working on, uh, which is being released in multiple parts, multiple small parts, I should say, is continuing. So I'm recording this video as of Thursday, October 8th, and I am a little late to this news. This was just released a few days ago, actually, uh, but this is the next iteration of that Klingon update for the game. And this one actually has a name. They're calling it House Shattered. So that is what this update is called, and it does bring a couple of new things that we can do. Or at least spend a little time playing the game in and doing. And there's some uh, rewards and stuff you can work toward by grinding a new TFO. So let's look at all that. I'm kind of going to go in order. Not, excuse me, not in order here. Uh, I pulled these out to cover the most important things first. So it says here, welcome to House Shattered. And uh, this screenshot here is actually really cool. I like this uh, this uh, screenshot they created here with this shattered glass, shattered mirror, and the Klingons in it. Because as we know from where the story has left off, from House Divided, remember that's the last storyline, House Divided, the Klingon Empire is shattered. A lot of shenanigans going on. Lots of shenanigans. House Mokai. Taku, not to, I wanted to almost said Takuvma. Uh, uh, what's her name? You know who I'm talking about. Gosh, I can't believe I forgot her name. It's actually been a while since I've played the storylines. But all those things have conspired against Jempok, of all Klingons. He's now the enemy somehow. Jaula, that's her name. Somehow Jaula has become the good guy. So. Things have kind of reversed in the last mission, and so it's very strange. And I don't know where they're going to head with this storyline. But this continues that storyline. This is House Shattered. Now, there is a uh, video that you can watch here. A, uh, I've got the uh, audio disabled for copyright reasons, but uh, this is on Star Trek Online's official YouTube page. So go check that out to watch the official video there with the audio. But we're just watching it here. It looks like we have the Klingons, you know, at war with each other, which is kind of where we left off. Jim Pock, um, all that. We've got House Mokai doing their thing. A little big old fight scene here. And uh, this is the new TFO. I've played it, so I will do another video on it, and then I don't know what's going on there. But how shattered you so again go to the official Star Trek Online webpage to view that and you will be able to watch that video. But let's read about it here. Let me make this bigger so you can follow along. First, the house was divided. Now it will be shattered. Following the events of June's house divided, captains found themselves on the run, accused of a crime they didn't commit. Chancellor Jempok of the Klingon Empire has gone mad with power and jealousy, partnering with Akar, Galron's grandfather, to devastate the peaceful planet of Kittimer, attempting to destroy all his enemies at once. He framed this crime on the renegade Klingon Matriarch Jaula, Legendary General Martok, and you. Now, this ramshackle alliance must find a way to clear their names and try and set things right. With help from the mysterious... Witch of Nimbus 3, what is what is that? Witch of Nimbus 3, I don't know that one. Adepta? They might do it, but even that won't set everything right. If Jimpok is removed from power, there is nothing standing in Jaula's way of seizing control, and she may be no better than the Mad Chancellor. House Shattered is our latest story update to the Star Trek Online. In it, you'll find a brand new episode called Partisans, 
where captains can team up with Martok, Ja'ula, Adepta, and the crew of the Orion Syndicate ship, the Cold Star, in a race to find the evidence to clear their names. J.G. Herzl as Martok, Robert O'Reilly as Akar, and Rekha Sharma as Adepta all return to Star Trek Online in this brand new adventure that advances the story began in House Divided. In addition, a brand new Task Force Operation Synthwave takes captains to the infamous invasion of Mars from Star Trek Picard, where with Utopia Planitia's android workforce in revolt, how many lives can you save? This scenario brings a brand new gameplay style with an ever-shrinking environment and wave after wave of synth ships closing in. With House Shattered, we're also adding a brand new ship to the Infinity Lockbox, the Mirror Warship. This Constitution-class ship is overhauled by technology from the Mirror Universe and turned into a devastating flagship of the Empress. Five new items from Star Trek Enterprise are joining the low-buy store, allowing access to long-awaited items like the Mako Rifle. I've got to go check that out. I didn't know that was there. The Experimental Upgrade System is live today as well. I don't know what that is. Experimental Upgrade System. For a limited time, everyone in the game gets one of these tokens for free, allowing them to add a device slot a console slot, and a new trait slot to their favorite T5U or Tier 6 ship. This brand new system brings exciting new options to your favorite ships. Additional tokens are available in the ultra rare tier of the Phoenix Prize Pack and the Zen Store. Okay, so let's see, a device slot? I don't really use a lot of device slots, so that's really not as a benefit to me, but an extra console slot, I, I wonder what where it puts it. Is it engineering? Is it tactical? Is it science? And then a trait slot. That can be advantageous to have an extra trait. All right. Uh, we can't wait. Let's say finally it's part of the Year of the Klingon. Yeah, Year of the Klingon. That's what this whole thing is called. I forgot what the whole thing is called. It's called Year of Klingon. We've updated the Warzone mission arc for Klingon characters. Okay, play through two completely remade maps. Ah, I didn't know that either. Gameplay improvements across all missions, brand new cutscenes, and the debut of Shannon Cochran as the voice of Lady Cirilla. Female Klingon captains will find new new head options available as well. So if you're a female Klingon captain, go check out the tailor for some head options. We can't wait to see you fight to clear your name. So why, which mission, though, in the Klingon arc? It doesn't say here. It says we've updated the Warzone mission arc for Klingon characters. Play through two completely remade maps. But it doesn't say which missions those are. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to have to go read the uh, the notes, I guess, the patch notes to find out what missions those are. But uh, so that's the basics of House Shattered. It's a new playable mission that we're going to have that's in the game now. So let's say an actual mission we can play that continues the storyline. You've got a new TFO called Synthwave. And as I'm about to show you, uh, you're going to get a reward for that as well called widening the gyre it's a some kind of reward for that uh, and then you've got this upgrade thing where you can upgrade a tier 5 u or tier 6 ship get an extra device slot console slot and trait some new stuff in the low buy store some head options for female characters in the tr in the tailor uh, and maybe a new ship yeah the mirror universe ship that I, I've also got here in a tab those are the new things so not a lot of things. I mean, we're not we're talking about we're not talking about a huge update here. This is again, they're doing these Klingon arc updates, uh, very in very small increments, and I guess two missions in the Warzone arc. But again, I don't know which missions those are. So let's read first about the widening gyre of it. Um, oh yeah, that's right. So the reward for this is actually a space set. It's a, a unique space set that uses the mycelial stuff. So, yeah, we're back to that that mycelial stuff again. But it utilizes that to some degree for some effects or whatever. Let's read about this. As part of our upcoming content release from October 6th to November 5th, so you have until November 5th to do this. That's, a, that's like almost that's a full month. PC captains playing Star Trek Online will have access to a special event called the Widening Gyre. This new event will provide participating captains with an epic reward, the Imperial Rift Space Set. So that's the space set I was talking about. It's called the Imperial Rift Space Set. And it's a complete space set. I think it's like, uh, you know, warp core, shield, deflector, engine. 
Participating in this event grants daily progress toward the grand prize, the Imperial Rift Space Set. Obtaining the Imperial Rift Space Set requires 20 daily progress, so that's why this thing goes on a month. You need to do this for 20 days. <laughs> 20 days. And captains can earn once uh, daily progress per account by playing either the brand new episode, so you can get it by playing, you can get, you know, one progress toward it through playing the new episode or the new TFO that's called Synthwave. Once captains have obtained 20 daily progress, they can claim the Imperial Rift space set. After that, the event will still be playable, granting a scaling dilithium reward that begins at 8,000, blah, blah. That's normal after you complete an event. Captains will also have the option to purchase the remaining progress in the event with Zen. So if you just want to buy it out, I guess the option's there for you. Um, again, I'll cut the audio on this one, which it is. The Imperial Rift space set, again, we're using mycelial energy here to do something. It looks cool. I'm not. Don't, I'm not sure what it's doing. It opens a mycelial rift, and I guess does like spatial damage or something because it's a rift in space. Previously, in House Divided, the Klingon Empire descended into civil war. The opening days of which saw the development of a brutal new weapon of war, the mycelial rift. Details of the event are hotly debated by those accused of the act, but the technology involved is less objective. Numerous advances in subspace particle physics were required to direct the multidimensional emissions involved in these rifts, and the kit built from the research is formidable in its own right. These devices taken together allow a ship to open its own weaponized mycelial rifts. Revolutionary gear, they're calling this. Each of these pieces of the Imperial Rift space set provides its own special bonuses. The deflector array captures excess power used for the beam or cannon firing modes and shunts it into control expertise and starship particle generators. The impulse engines pair nicely with them, enabling control-based bridge officer abilities to improve weapon amplification. The warp and singularity cores improve auxiliary power capacity, and the shield array improves energy weapon damage based on auxiliary power. All of these pieces of gear improve other elements of ship performance, but they really shine when combined. Did everybody catch all of that? There will be a quiz later. So two pieces improves damage resistant rating versus foes in the forward arc, improves ship turn rate, and increased exotic damage critical severity based on starship weapon amplification. Three pieces enables weaponized mycelium emitter, emitter. After charging for several seconds, this deals severe radiation damage to foes in front of you and creates a rift, which deals additional kinetic damage. And then all four pieces augments the mycelium emitter, increasing the damage and duration of the rift, and gives it a chance to manifest allied Elashi ships. Additionally, having all four pieces improves critical chance in starship hull capacity. So this is a special event for our next drop, which is actually out right now. So blah, 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 that's it. So to do that, to get that Imperial Space Rift set, you can play uh, the mission daily or the TFO daily, once a day, 20 days, or you can buy it out in Zen. And that's the reward. So that's part of this House Shattered update. All right, so now let's read about the TFO. First of all, it's called Synthwave. It's, it's based on the Star Trek Picard Synth Invasion of Mars. If you haven't seen it, that's probably foreign to you. Um, if you have seen it, you understand what this is. Um, I have played this. I made a video already. I'll put a link up in the top right corner. Go check it out. I did a non-commentary run. And that is because I just wanted to run it and see what it was like. And uh, I did record that run. I just didn't talk in it. So you can go watch it and see what my very first run of this was like. I will do another run of it with commentary so I can give you my feedback. Uh, but you can check out that run anyway. Uh, I'm not going to go through this whole storyline here. Uh, but this is the storyline of the synth attack on Mars. Starfleet is conducting training simulations of the infamous synth attack on Mars in the hopes that history will never be forgotten nor that terrible day repeated. As part of the continuing training programs of the Kittimer Alliance, they have opened the simulation to Klingons, Romulans, and Jim Hadar captains. Very soon you'll be able to join the task force operation. Well, very soon is now, because it's in the game right now. Um, by standing strong against the Synthways. Synthways challenges you to stand against adversity no matter the odds and to never ever forget the lessons of history. So this is out in the game now, and this is part of that widening gyre event. You play this once a day, you get progress, and then in 20 days you can get your reward. This can last a little while. It's not a short 
TFO, so prepare yourself. Give yourself like 25 minutes. It goes faster if everybody does what they're doing, but um, us people sometimes don't necessarily know how to play this just yet, so it may go a little wonky on you. Um, some of it's a bit annoying, uh, but anyway, I'll talk more about it when I actually do my playthrough of it with commentary. Then I'll leave my opinion of it in that. But anyway, that is in the game now. Um, so Star Trek Online is now on the Epic Games Store. So it's already been in Steam, of course, forever. I, in fact, I bought Star Trek Online through Steam 10 years ago when it came out. So, uh, But now it's in the Epic Games Store. So that's new. Star Trek Online is coming to the Epic Games Store. In addition to the ability to launch the game from Arc or Steam, we're now joining the Epic Games Storefront as a third option to play in the Final Frontier on PC. I guess that'll just bring more people into the game. That's cool. This means you'll be able to download and launch Stow from the Epic Games Store as well as purchasing Zen bundles from their storefront. So that's nice if you if you uh, use that storefront and that launcher and all that. This is good for you. As part of our launch event in the Epic Games Store, Star Trek Online is launching the Epic Pack for Epic Games users, available for $34.99. This bundle is a great way to start or continue your adventures. So uh, I think other other people can buy this, though. Do they have to be in the Epic Games Store to buy this? I don't know. But you get a Tier 6 ship coupon, an Epic Phoenix token, Combat Tardigrade, Intelligence Uniform, 14 Mark II Very Rare Space Gear, 7 Mark II, so I mean that's only for early level stuff. I guess you can upgrade them though. Elite Services Starter Pack, which includes 36 inventory slots, 26 bank slots, 2 bridge officer slots, 3 skill retrain tokens, and a new title called Epic. My question though is can you buy this bundle even if you're not running the game through the Epic Game Store or, ga or Launcher? I think so. Well, reading this, that's what it sounds like. You just have to pay the $35. It's probably in the Zen store somewhere. I don't know. But anyway, the big point here is in the Epic Games Store. So that's nice. Hopefully that brings more people to the game. All right. The ship that smashed the mirror. This is one I never saw coming. But of course, I never see any of the dis discovery stuff coming. Yet it still comes. So, <laughs> you know. The Infinity Lockbox, containing prizes from nearly all previously retired lockboxes, will be available again on PC October 6th. During this time, enemies defeated on both ground and space maps will have a small chance of dropping one of these prize-filled packages, while the Angel's Wake Lockbox will be retired. This run of the Infinity Lockbox will contain an all-new Tier 6 starship, the Mirror Warship, and several new prizes will be added to the Lobi store. Continue reading further. So after crossing over into the Mirror Universe and aiding Empress Sato in her takeover, the Constitution-class ship formerly known as the USS Defiant was unquestionably the most powerful vessel of its time. However, that wasn't enough for the warmongering Terran Empire or its Empress, and the ship saw a series of continual refits to emphasize the tactical superiority it already held over other vessels. More weapon emplacements, more powerful engines, and a bloodthirsty crew made it a warship that kept the Empire strong for years. The Mirror Warship features two command seats, Engineering and Tactical, in addition to Lieutenant Commander Universal at Slash Intelligence Seat. So Oops, sorry about that. Ship details, Tier 6, Faction, Federation, and Federation Aligned. Complete the tutorial, Hull Modifier 1.3, Shield 0 0.95, 5 4, three, uh, uh, five four weapons, 3 aft, 3 device slots, Commander Tactical, Commander Engineering, that's nice, Con Lieutenant Commander Universal slash Intelligence, Ensign Science, Ensign Tactical. Console Modifications, 5 Tactical, 4 Engineering, 2 Science, Base Turn Rate 13.5, plus 10 to uh, Weapons Power, plus 5 to Shield and Engine. It's got an Interphasic Rift Generator as a Universal Console. It's got the uh, Warship Starship Mastery Package. So it sounds like a good escorty type ship um, even though it's not a, a a glass cannon it's actually a pretty powerful tactical ship it's got a lot of tactical ability to it um, 
When activated, this console generates a naturally closing, smaller version of the interphasic rift that doomed the USS Defiant and sent it to the Mirror Universe. Despite its smaller scale, it is no less devastating to foes who are in contact with the rift, as their ship will suffer from extreme physical stresses, power fluctuations, and difficulty moving. This console additionally provides a boost to critical severity and hull capacity. It can be equipped on any starship in any slot. Then you have the Terran Goodbye Starship trait. Whenever you defeat a foe, you will gain a temporary boost to critical hit chance and accuracy rating that lasts for several seconds and stacks up to three times. And some new low-buy store items. We've got uh, some, some stuff here. Phase Pistol, 22nd Century. The Phase Pistol was a type of phase-modulated energy weapon, a personal sidearm characterized by a focused energy discharge in the form of steady stream or a phase pulse. It was introduced in 2151 for use by Starfleet personnel as a replacement to the EM-33 pistol. This recreation has been updated to be suitable for modern fieldwork, while maintaining its classic appeal. This weapon can be fired continuously, drilling through any target. It can also be overloaded and kicked at your target in extreme situations. I like that. That's classic. So basically, it's the Enterprise face pistol. That's cool, though. Um, the Mako Pulse Rifle, which I think also looks really nice. This early type of energy rifle was a standard-issue carbine-directed energy particle weapon in the 22nd century for members of an Earth division of ground troops known as Mako. This recreation has that vintage look, but it's suitable for modern combat operations. It has a chance to improve most ground stats for a short duration when fired. Ooh, I like that. Uh, and it looks good. It looks good. Wide arc phase cannons. Okay, another Enterprise thing. I wonder why they're bringing in... Uh, Star Trek Enterprise stuff so late into the game, but yeah, in this Klingon update, I don't get the connection. Uh, phase cannons are a type of particle weapon which served as a successor to plasma cannons and as a precursor to the phaser of the 23rd and 24th centuries. These weapons have been updated to work with modern weapon systems and targeting arrays that grant a boost to energy and par pro projectile weapon damage when hitting a down, a down shield facing. These special weapons are comparable to dual heavy cannons, but have a wider firing arc. They may be used on any starship. I have to try that out then. I will have to try that out. And then the spatial torpedo again. They used. Uh, uh, they didn't have photon torpedoes yet. Spatial torpedoes were torpedo weapons carried. Well, actually, I think they came out with photonic torpedoes. Was that it? They weren't exactly photon torpedoes, but that was like later in the series. Weird. Spatial torpedoes were torpedo weapons carried aboard Starfleet ships during the 22nd century prior to the installation of photonic torpedoes and other more powerful modern warheads. Upgraded to work with con contemporary weapon systems, these spatial torpedoes deal extra damage when hitting empty shield facings. Huh. I want to try that too. The Console Universal Reinforced Weapon Assembly. This specialized suite of technology was specifically tailored to compensate for inefficiencies in the designs of certain 22nd century weaponry, allowing them to function at much greater yields without debilitating side effects and other malfunctions, this Universal Console provides a boost to power transfer rate, maximum weapon power, in addition, activating draining bridge officer abilities decreases the weapon power cost significantly. So that's kind of cool. It's like an enhancing kind of weapon system for the ship. I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. Careless Overload, two-piece bonus. Activate a special firing mode that increases the rate of fire, uh, damage, and number of affected targets for your phase cannon and spatial torpedo. This mode does not affect other weapons and overrides all other firing modes. After the mode has run its course, these weapons will be unusable for a short amount of time. And then Careful Tuning. Improves the Careless Overload ability by reducing its recharge time. Additionally, your phase cannon and spatial torpedo will no longer be offline after the mode's duration completes. So that's some cool stuff there to try out. Uh, again, I don't get the connection of why we're getting all this Enterprise stuff during a big Klingon arc update. Uh, I do like it, and of course I want it in the game. I, I love this stuff. I like more Enterprise stuff. It's fun to play with. I, I just don't, um, don't get... Why now? What's why? Why now? Uh, but I guess I'll take it. <laughs> All right, this next thing is very unique. Upgrade a tier six ship for free. When I first read this, I thought that meant like 
you know, upgrade one of your tier five U ships or tier five ships to a tier six ship. Um, but no, that's not exactly what this is. Very soon on PC, which is actually right now, uh, we will be introducing a new starship feature that will allow captains to apply additional capabilities to their favorite starships, pushing their performance. So basically what this sounds like to me is instead of just giving us tier seven ships, they're allowing us to expand certain capabilities on our tier six ships and make them just a little bit better, a plus one. You know, they're a plus one or a plus two above a standard tier six ship, which is interesting that they're going that route. This system called Experimental Upgrades will allow tier six and tier five U starships to be upgraded beyond their current limits. I actually find this very useful for tier five U ships because they certainly need those kinds of upgrades because they're not tier six ships. But I guess this will make your tier six ship also a little bit better too. Adding new equipment slots and other options to any upgraded ship that you take into battle. Experimental upgrades can be applied by visiting any ship selector location, which are found in most star bases and social zones, and will make use of a new token called Experimental Starship Upgrade Tokens. These tokens will be found in numerous places throughout Star Trek Online, allowing captains multiple methods of obtaining the materials they need to push their starship's performance capabilities beyond the stars. From October 6th to November 5th, which is a whole month, anyone can claim one of these tokens per account in the space items sections of the Zen store for free. Well, that's a big plus right there. So go grab one of these and try it out on your favorite tier six ship, I guess. I'm definitely going to grab one as well. I guess though, once it's used, it's used. So pick wisely which ship you put it on. If you're like me and you change ships out a lot, it may not be extremely useful because I'm constantly rotating my ships especially because I do rev uh, reviews on them, or I'm going to be continuing to do reviews on those ships. So I'm constantly revolving my ships. I don't really have one that stays around for a very long time. <laughs> but I guess maybe I'll find one that I like and then keep upgrading it. It's probably what I'll do. I'll find like the one that's like on that character I want to be the ship, and I'll just keep upgrading it and upgrading and upgrading it until it's just super op. How's that sound? <laughs> The experimental upgrade unlocks several new options for your favorite starship. Upon application of the experimental upgrade, blah, 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 you get plus one device slot, plus one universal console slot. Okay, so it's going to be a universal console slot. That's nice. So I can slot a science, tactical, or engineering in it. I love that. And one starship trait slot. Only active on ships that have had an experimental prototype upgrade applied. A cosmetic upgrade will also occur, altering the name of your ship's class to append an X designation to its current class name. Oh, I get this. So this is like the NX series ships, indicating that it's an experimental upgrade has been applied to the ship's class. Much as it has always been when upgrading any tier, si tier 5 ship to T5U, experimental upgrades are not limited to a single character when applied. Each time you apply an upgrade to a ship on your account, that ship class will then be free to upgrade on... Oh, okay, good. So it doesn't... It's not just for that ship on that character. It's for that whole ship class, even on all your other characters. Oh, that makes this much better then. This, that makes this much more useful. Thank you. That's cryptic. That's a good choice you made there. As a special promotional event rolling out with our next major story update, which is right now, you get one free upgrade. Uh, visit the space items of the Zen store and you get one token per account. Additional tokens will also be made available in the Phoenix Reclamation store at the Ultra Rare tier. The next major story update will mark the re-release of special limited time events associated with the Phoenix prize pack where all players may claim one free pack each day. Experimental Starship upgrade tokens will be available on the Phoenix Reclamation store only during these special events, the first of which will be scheduled to run until October 12th. Hmm. Okay. Um, purchase a bundle of two of these tokens in exchange for one ultra rare prize token. We'll be adding more ways to acquire these tokens throughout gameplay, so keep an eye out for future events and promotions that also reward one or more of these tokens. They could be coming soon to events, or giveaways, bundles, promotional offers, and more. And in addition to these possible in-game methods of acquisition, players will also have the option to purchase these upgrade tokens directly from the Zen store, in singles or in a bundle. 
one experimental Star Trek upgrade token for a thousand zen, a bundle of three for two thousand zen. Both offerings will enjoy discounted prices upon their initial release, dropping them by 20% off for the first week that are available. Tokens purchased from the Zen store may be freely traded to other players and even listed on the exchange. This new feature and all associated promotions will also appear on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 to coincide with the release of our next major story update on those platforms. All right, here's some uh, FAQs. Can you apply this upgrade to any ship? You can use an experimental token on any T5U or Tier 6 ship. This includes fleet ships, legendary ships, ships obtained from lockboxes, and infinity promotions. What class does the upgrade affect? When you upgrade a ship, the upgrade is applied to any ships of that exact type on your account. This means that applying it to a legendary pilot defiant will only upgrade that ship on all characters on your account, but will not upgrade a tier 5 defiant, for example. Do you have to choose one of the three options? No. Upgrading a ship grants you the console slot, trade slot, and device slot. All three. Will the trade slot unlock for my character? No, the trait slot is specific to any ship you've applied and upgraded to. You will have access to an extra trait slot while commanding any ship that has had the upgrade. Will fleet ships automatically upgrade? Applying the upgrade to a non-fleet version of a ship will not automatically upgrade a fleet version of the ship. <laughs> so that's uh, important. Will some ships automatically be upgraded like they were? No, any ship that you would like to upgrade will require a token. And how will this affect a character bound ships? The upgrade will still affect all ships of that type on your account. So for example, if you obtain the Zinkethi Dreadnought on two of your characters, you would only need to upgrade the ship once on one character to unlock the extra slots on both ships. Whew. So there you go. That's a new mechanic. And I wonder, they'll probably do more with that, right? So they'll come out with more tokens that do other things, like maybe a token you know, could improve your hull strength, your shield strength, and your power levels or something like that. I imagine they can keep releasing these and doing different things to your ships to keep upgrading them in different ways. That's a very cool idea, actually. But it does mean, what's the future of future tiered starships? Will they ever come out with a tier 7 or a tier 8 starship? Because that, because technically you could upgrade a ship enough that it would become a basically a tier 7 ship in that way. So I don't know what their plans are, but this seems to be where they're headed right now. Doing it this way. So those are all the updates in Star Trek Online for uh, Thursday, October 8th. Um, basically, this house shattered event is the big thing here. Um, that's what's important. Uh, house shattered here. Um... And that basically includes, again, a recap, a new playable mission. It's going to have a new TFO. It's already got the new TFO. Uh, a couple of revamped missions in the uh, Klingon War story arc. You have this upgrade token available to upgrade your favorite Tier 5U or Tier 6 ship. Um, you've got the new mirror ship. Uh, you have... New stuff in the low buy store, a lot of enterprise themed stuff in the low buy store. And of course, by doing the widening gyre TFO, uh, you get that um, imperial mycelial rift space set. So that's basically the gist of it. So, um, what I'll do is continuing videos from here is I will go in the game and just show you where all those things are show you where to go to look at all that. We'll also go in the low buy store and take a look at those new enterprise things. And so I'll just do like a, a quick introduction inside the game that shows you these new things and how to go do them. Then in the next video after that, I'm going to play the new mission because I'm curious how the storyline is going to go, right? I'll do a let's play of the mission and I will also do a let's play of the TFO with commentary this time. That is the plan. So if you want to see all of that and you want to see my opinions and thoughts on the mission and the TFO and all of those things. Oh, and I'm going to play the, 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 the two revamped uh, KDF missions as well once I find out what they are. In fact, let's go find out what they are right now because I should be able to go to patch notes. You know what? It may not be these patch notes. No, it's the patch notes before this. 
Let's go to let's just do this real quick. See which missions are updated so we'll know for sure. Mm, special events, rewards. Here we go. Episodes in the War Zone story arc in the mission journal for the Klingon Defense Force have been revamped to bring the quality more up to par with recent content. This includes updated environments, new cutscenes, and new character art. Episodes in the but which episodes again? Episodes in the Hang on, female characters. Hope you guy Lady Cirilla. On Forcus. So these are some of the updates. Klingon female characters have received several brand new complexion and options that give those characters a higher definition look. The Ketha region of Kronos has been given an updated mission flow to help guide you to your next destination. Lady Cirilla's model has been completely reworked and she will be voiced by her original actress Shannon Cochran. The environments of Forcus and Gorath have been completely updated with a much sleeker Klingon look. On Forcus, as part of the completely updated math, you'll do battle in a fully updated Batleth ring. That sounds interesting. While Gorath, the stronghold of House Torg, is our second completely updated map. Gorath, the stronghold of House Torg, is our second completely updated map. and has a totally new throne room that's perfect for your screenshot needs. Targs have been completely resigned to bring the quality more up to par with recent content. And there's a blog here. I'm sure somewhere in there. Oh, okay. So there's another update I haven't read. Well, let's cover this because I have I didn't see this. Uh, the Year of Klingon Part Two. So that's what we're in now. This second update. The Year of Klingon continues its rise to glory, beginning with our June update. Um, House divided. We announced blah blah. The second part focuses on the story arc War Zone. This story continues your journey with Alexander Worf's son, who is living a new life as Kemtar. The mission in this arc have been streamlined, given all new environments, new cutscenes. So is it all the missions then? The Ketha region of Kronos has been given an update. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the environments of Forcus For, uh, and Goroth have been updated. Okay, we just read all that. So, yeah, we've got a... A ring battle scene that we can do that's gonna be interesting and uh, a throne room they said you can do some screenshots here that looks very menacing the throne room on Gorath that's kind of cool and finally the Klingon female characters have Receive several brand new complexion options, blah, blah, blah. Remember, a war does not let a friend. So I'm still questioning, is it all of the missions under the story arc war zone, or is it just a couple of them? I guess the only way I'm going to know is to have to go in and play them, aren't I? Because <laughs> so, I have no idea. But if anyone knows which specific missions they've updated, give me the mission name in the comments, and I will replay those missions and we'll take a look at it. Please let me know. Uh, other than that, I, I guess we'll end it here. Uh, the Year of the Klingon Part 2 has begun in Star Trek Online. House Shattered. The update is out. Um, I will go into the game and take a look at all the new stuff. Then I'll play all the new stuff. And that should be a lot of fun. Let me know which missions those are. Under Warzone. So that I uh, replay the right missions. And uh, I'll do that. Well, there you go. Um, if you want to see all of that and my opinions on everything, uh, consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell icon for notifications for new videos. And uh, give this video a like if you like what you see here. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Check out Twitter at Brent underscore Justice for updates. You can follow me there. Also, check out my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Brent Justice. This helps support the channel and also allows me to publish more and more videos.